Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. The Premier League is fast approaching and I've been given the duties of predicting 20th to number one. We'll have a quick 30, 40 seconds breakdown of the teams and why I think they're going to finish in that position. Without further ado, let's get on to the 20th place position. Finishing bottom of the Premier League will be newly promoted Ipswich Town. Finished second last year in the Championship. Quite an between them, Leeds and Leicester going up. They were both giving each other chances. Ipswich had a little bit more form than Leeds. Secured all automatic promotion seconds. But I think it's going to be a very, very tough season for them. They've brought in a couple of players. Connor Townsend from West Brom. Liam Delap from Man City. I just feel arguably... The squad for me is going to be too thin and they're going to struggle in the Premiership and thus finishing bottom in 20th. In 19th place will be the second of the newly promoted teams. That is Southampton. Yes, they have brought in Diaz. They've brought in Finn Downs from West Ham. They have lost Che Adams. I just feel, again, they went up via the playoffs. I just think it's going to be a tough ask for Southampton we do get these yo-yo teams quite often where a team goes up through the playoffs, they struggle to, to adapt to premiership life and they go back down. So that's going to be the new yo-yo team for the next couple of seasons. But fortunately for me, they're not going to do enough to stay in the premiership and they're going to finish in 19th. And to round up the relegation, 18th place, the champions of the championship. Yep, I'm going for the full clean sweep of promoted teams to go straight back down. In 18th will be Leicester. They've just lost their manager, Mareska, to my team, Chelsea. That's obviously going to be a big impact loss for them with the style of football they played. They have brought in Reid from Fulham. They brought in the guy from Sport in Lisbon, £70 million, I believe. Um, obviously losing uh, Drewsby Hall to Chelsea. But other than that, I just think... They're going to be lingering around the verge of 17th, 18th for much of the season. And I just think come second last game of the season, they're going to be confirmed relegated in 18th. So my 18th place finish is the third of the new promoted teams, Leicester City. The 17th place side, just about surviving relegation, will be Brentford. They've had a good few years in the Premiership and it should still continue. Fans again on Thomas Frank's back towards the end of the season. I don't get why. I thought he's done a fantastic job keeping them in the Premiership as long as they have. Um, obviously now they brought in that uh, Eagle from Bruges. He's had an injury. He had surgery. We don't know what's going on with Tony. I presume they'll keep him till the striker comes back. But if Tony goes, maybe they can get someone in. I'm not too sure. But... I just feel they're going to be lacking in departments. Yes, they brought in a couple of other players, but Brentford really need to go into the transfer market, bolster up the attack options, and in my prediction, they're finishing just above the relegation zone in 17th. Following Brentford in 16th will be Nottingham Forest. I feel for the couple of seasons they've been back in the Premier League, they have been uh, flirting with relegation. They've brought in a couple of players, notably the midfielder from Newcastle, Elliot Anderson, £41 million, a lot of money. They've brought in Milankovic from Fiorentina, 14.3. So they are recruiting. Forest just seems to be a team, I, I feel they're, they're pretty hard to be at home, but away they're not as strong. And I think they're going to continue. Again, they're going to flirt with relegation, but I think they're going to be OK towards the end of the season and just peer out in 16th. So for Morton Forest, we'll finish in position 16. In 15th position is where I have Wolverhampton Wanderers. Again, a team last couple of years have been sort of flirting around the bottom half of the table. Um, they seem to get a couple of good runs going during points of the season. Um, that secures their safety. It's a tough place to go to, Molyneux. Uh, Chelsea fan, I know we struggle there. Uh, I'm a big fan of Gary and I think he's done wonders for for the money he's been given, for, for the players he has to work with. Now they've lost Kilman to West Ham, how much is that, that going to impact the team? I'm not sure. I think they're going to be okay. They've brought a player in from Braga, uh, Gomez, um, and a couple more, but 
maybe they're going to need to get one or two more players in transfer window, but I think they're going to be okay. And they're going to finish in 15th, just ahead of Nottingham Forest, and just behind 14th place, Fulham. Yes, it might be pretty low to some people. Uh, they've got high expectations. Uh, I've been speaking to, to friends, family, people that have clubs and pubs uh, when I'm out and about. Uh, I'm speaking to Fulham fans who I know and that, that they are optimistic of the season. I'm not too sure. Um, they've just recruited ML Smith-Rowe, 31 mil, fantastic signing for them. Um, but they've lost Polinia um, and a couple more other players. Uh, so, I'd, uh, would I be surprised if they're higher? No, but I just feel for me, unless they start bringing a colour more, yes, they could build around Smith Rowe. Um, but Los Pelini is massive. And uh, yeah, that's where I've got them. I'm not sure they're going to get any higher, but um, I'm happy to be proven wrong. So, in 14th, will be Fulham. In 13th position, I have Bournemouth playing fantastic football last year. They seem to be quite a threat to many teams. A lot of teams didn't want to play them. They were playing attractive football. Their, their manager seems to like playing the attacking way and he benefits with players like Solanke. Talking of Solanke, there is a lot of talk potentially going to Spurs. He's been linked with a couple of other teams, obviously striker short. Um, will they be able to keep hold of him? Uh, at least till January, will they be able to keep hold of him full stop? Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, a couple of arrivals, uh, Sinius Sinistera from Leeds, and they've got a guy from uh, Australian League, I believe, Alex Paulson. Will it be enough? I'm not too sure. Again, the key is keeping the style of football they're playing under the manager and making sure you keep assets like Solanke. I'd try to record him. We've got Carlo Isco for the transfer window ends. Let's wait and see. But for number 13, it's Bournemouth. In 12th position, I have maybe arguably a little bit too low to some people. I'm looking forward to hearing what people's predictions are. But in 12th position, I have Brighton and Hove Albion. They've brought in the new manager from St. Pauli. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce his name. Herzler, um, who'd won the German 2 League with St. Pauli. Uh, he's come with a big reputation. Brian have brought in a couple of players. Uh, not that I know very well of. Um, they got one from Newcastle and a couple of other teams in Europe. Um, losing Pascal Gross, uh, that's going to be a big loss for them. But overall, the manager's got a style of football he likes playing. It's going to be interesting. This one, I wouldn't be surprised if they finish eighth. I wouldn't be surprised if they finish 15th. The manager's playing a positive style of football. Um, and let's just see. Uh, so for the time being, in this early prediction, I've got Brighton in position number 12. Number 11 spots, we have Everton. Finally, they're going to have a season where they're not lingering around the relegation zone for pretty much much of the season. They've had issues off the field with the points deduction, with the financial fair play. They've had issues with their the ownership. Um, they're moving into a new stadium soon. Things will be looking up for Everton. Yes, it, 11, for their fans' expectations, it's not where they want to be, but it's a massive progression from where they've been the last couple of seasons. And with a legendary club like that, it's good to see them going in the right direction. Sean Dyer should seem to have stabilised the club. Um, and uh, let's hope it continues. So, yes, 11th for Evan fans. I do apologise, my prediction, but I just feel you're taking your time. They're doing it the right way and they're going to finish this season in 11th. In 10th place, this could be probably the debatable one because speaking to the fans of this club, they're expecting higher. But in my 10th spot, I've got West Ham United. David Moyes' era has finished. They've brought in uh, players over the summer, uh, Somerville from Leeds and Falkrug from Dortmund, massive players. They've also bought a, a player from Palmeiras, who's apparently going to be a fantastic talent. So they have bought some fantastic players in. The only noble loss they've lost is Flynn down to Southampton. So they've managed to keep their core players, like Bowen. Um, Paqueta, obviously, he's been suspended. And a couple of others I can't name to my heads, but speaking to West Ham fans are optimistic they can really push for a European sport. I'm not too sure. I need to see it. I think they're going to be tough to beat. Tenth position may not do them justice, but that's how I feel where they're going to finish. In number 10 is West Ham United.
In ninth place, maybe a surprise to many, will be Aston Villa for me. I feel the Champions League is going to be a distraction. Granted, fantastic achievement for Aston Villa, finishing fourth. They've got a very experienced manager in Emery, who I'm a big fan of. Will their squad depth be enough? I'm not too sure. Um, granted, I think, again, the distra- distraction of playing Wednesday, th- Tuesday, then Saturday, Sunday, their players experience enough. They're sure going to find out soon. Um, but... I think they're going to be on a down year, down year this season. Would they surprise me get into Europe? No. Top four, I don't think so. I think it was just that year last year where, like, for Man United, Chelsea, Tom, I just couldn't pick up. And uh, Villa cleaned up. But uh, this season, I think they're going to have a regression. Uh, I think they'll go in the group stages of Champions League too. And their Premiership season, they will finish in ninth place. In eighth place, and I don't think this is going to be a shock, Chelsea, well, my Chelsea, I feel the club's an absolute mess at the moment. Uh, the time recording, uh, Conor Gallagher is on his way to Madrid to finalise a move. Uh, that's another homegrown talent lost. Don't like the sign of Moresco as manager. We need to keep pushing for another season or two. Granted, we finish in the top four, win the cup, domestic cup. Yes, I'll be very, very happy. I'm not saying I'll be wrong with it. I just, uh, this season, I just say that I don't care. My expectations are so low. I just don't feel we're going to win many matches. I'm just not confident. Granted, we need to keep Carl Palmer. We could end up selling him in January. He could have enough. I just don't know where this club's going. With the ownership we've got, we're turning into a circus act. And uh, yeah, sad times at Chelsea. But the players, ownership, owe the fans everything. Eighth place finish for Chelsea. In seventh place, in my predictions, and probably the most ambitious, riskiest team I could put as high up as seventh is Crystal Palace. They have lost Michael Elise to Bayern Munich. I thought at the end of last season they were arguably one of the top five teams playing the style of football. The manager plays great football. They've got fantastic players. And again, speaking to a few Palace fans, they're optimistic. Um, but in Ismail Asar from Marseille, I'm a massive fan of him. And they've got a free transfer of a Japanese guy. I spoke to Phil, who runs the uh, YouTube channel. He said he's going to be a great talent. And um, with Marco Lise being injury prone anyway, they've still got Ize. Matata is a fantastic player. I think Palace can generally make a make a run for a European sport, Europa League. They can go deep in the cup. Again, the way they finish the season, wouldn't put it past them. Maybe it's a bit too high, but let's see. In my seventh position is Crystal Palace. In sixth place, I have Newcastle United. Finished the season last year in seventh. Arguably disappointing for many of their fans. They believe that they should have been challenging for Champions League spots, and I agree. This season, with financial fair play over the club, um, I'm sure there's still kind of transfers to be had in terms of players leaving Newcastle. They have sold Elliot Anderson to Forrest, as we spoke about earlier. Um, I'm not too sure what's going to happen with Eddie Hell. There's a, him being strongly linked with a Newcastle job. Um, obviously, change your manager halfway in the season, if it ends up happening, isn't great. But I think Newcastle will be there about so definitely been for the European spots. They'll play the way Newcastle play. They'll win more than they lose. But I just feel they're lacking a couple of players for me. And ultimately, I think they're going to fall short of the Champions League spots, but secure Europa League in sixth position. So Newcastle United, in my prediction, finishing sixth. In fifth place and just agonisingly losing out in the Champions League spots is Tottenham Hotspur once again Big Ange the Lux play on this high line attacking football great to watch they score they leak goals I feel for me they're lacking a striker Ivan Tony Solanke they bring this in sorry bring them in before the start of the season that could all change yes they've got Richarlison obviously Song's ageing a bit now Romero needs to keep his discipline uh, at the back but they play, they play attacking football and it is good to watch as a neutral. Uh, forget the Chelsea's players' rivalry. I think they're going to fall a bit short for Champions League spots. Um, but again, I don't think it's going to be any different to last year. If they bring a striker in, an Ivan Tony or a Solanke, I'll happily bump them up a spot or two. But for me, right now, they're finishing just short of the Champions League spots in fifth. In fourth place, we have the Red Devils, Manchester United. 
getting back in the Champions League once again. This is a big call because I've spoken to a lot of people and a few of them have not even put them in the top seven, eight. People say they're glossing over the fact that they won the FA Cup. That's a fair point. But they've got fantastic young talent, Kobe Mainu and the other fellow that was playing towards the end of the season. They should have a fit Mason Mount, Bruno Fernandes. They've got some really, really threatening players. We could see a resurgence of uh, Rashford this season. They've got it there. They're going to give Ten Hag this time. Are the players behind them? If they're all together and there's no harmony in the dressing room, I think they make this Champions League fourth place. The new ownership are in now. Things seem to be stabilised a little bit more in Manchester. Red side of Manchester, shall we say. And I think they're going to do enough to get that fourth place Champions League spot next season. So Manchester United, for me, will finish in my fourth spot. In thirds, in their own little league, they're going to be too far ahead of Manchester United and not catching the top two is a Liverpool. Only slot new manager, new philosophies. Can he keep the forms of Mohamed Salah and co going? We know what Jurgen Klopp's style of football was. Very, very tough to beat. Fun to watch. Arnie Slot, people say pretty similar. We shall see. They are ageing players, such as uh, Mohamed Salah. We don't know what's going on with Darwin Nunes. I wasn't a big fan of him. Will Lewis Diaz fire. You got the win backs of Robertson's getting old. Trent, is he going to get back to the form we know? Van Dijk's ageing. They've got ageing players. Is this going to be a job too much for the Liverpool manager? We shall see. But I think finishing him third is quite comfortable for them this season in their own little league. So third place for me will be Liverpool. In second spot, we have Manchester City. We'll be having new champions this year. Man City, last couple of seasons, also have pushed them close. They've just done enough. I do feel that luck, you say running out, I feel that this is Arsenal's year. Grano, this Man City, it's Pep Guardiola, it's Phil Foden, Erling Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne, we know what they're capable of. They've got world-class players in all positions. I just feel this season, they're going to get pipped to the line to Arsenal. Can't really say why. I think it's going to come down to the last couple of games again. But I think Arsenal are just going to do enough. Maybe beat them on head-to-head, win at home, draw away. Just something like that will give that separation. I think this is Arsenal's year. And Manchester City, in my prediction, are finishing second. And the new champions of England. They've been waiting for this for a long while, the fan base. But they've got it back. Champions of England will be Arsenal. The last couple of years, they've been trending in the right direction. Two seasons ago, they pulled it. I don't think you can call them pulling it last season. They'd lost one in 23, which was that result against Villa. They've got players coming back from injury. The start of football, their playing's great. Uh, they've, they've bolstered up at the back. One question mark could be the strike force. Um, imagine them bringing in one more player now. Um, they could look unstoppable. But I think it's their year. If it isn't their year this season, it's definitely next season. I've said I've given them a two-year window. They could go back to about double champions. Be hard to beat City's four in a row in this day and age because teams will get better, such as Chelsea, Liverpool, etc. But this is Arsenal's year, I feel. And I feel all the players have had the experience of um, chasing Man City all the way. And I just feel having them a couple of years under their belt, keeping a lot of their main players. Fantastic captain and Odin God too. Um, I feel that this is their season. And uh, Arsenal fans, be prepared for a, a, a good celebration. It's, it's been a while, but... Um, if you carry the way you play in the uh, last couple of seasons, definitely deserve it. So my prediction, Arsenal, FC, the 2024-2025 Premier League champions. And there we have it, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in so far. If you've got this far, please remember to like and subscribe. And more importantly, can you please jot down in the comments what your 20 to 1 is? I know there's a few that may be well out of place, such as Palace. Um, but we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you think I've gone wrong on. Um, well, there's a couple of teams we're a bit iffy with, not knowing the knowledge, as, as many of you guys probably watching. But I gave it a good go. It was a lot of fun making it. Bit of a headache, bro. I was putting in a couple of teams. But um, that's the glory of trying to predict 20 teams in a, in a really competitive division. 
Um, so yes, please, if you can jot down your 20 to 1 and let us know who you think is going to win the league. Um, I'm looking forward to it. We've got a couple of weeks to go and uh, yeah, let's roll on to the 2024-2025 season. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks' time for week one of the Premiership season.